And now for the reveal. <laughs> will it work or will it blow up? It'll work. Water pump, shore power, water heater. Nothing blew up. <laughs> so the, the trip didn't trip on the water heater? No. no cool. One of the things we're always trying to do when we're filming is to make sure we haven't got a cluttered background. The boat is in such a state at the moment with so many different jobs still in the ongoing process that every background is cluttered so we've just given up. So apologies if you can see a load of junk behind me. Now this just arrived today. It's from America and it's dressed to me but then again we address all things to me it's just simpler that way uh, i don't remember uh, buying anything from america i'm not sure when it was sent but let's open it up and find out what it is <laughs> okay oh i know about this just before we went into lockdown i was approached by uh, the lady and the carpenter which is actually the name of the business and they're in America and the lady, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name right now because literally we've just opened the parcel. She does the marketing and her husband, who's a whiz at uh, working with wood, um, makes these really sturdy pegs amongst lots of other things. And uh, she asked me if I'd like a sample and if I, you know, if I'd do a test over time. So I said, absolutely because that's one thing that we've noticed on the boat the plastic pegs they just disintegrate really quickly and the wooden pegs yeah don't last that long these are made from maple wood and a heavy duty stainless steel spring so these look really sturdy let me just get one out wow that is and um, look at the detail just the attention to detail yeah it's beautiful isn't it over time I'm going to test these and I'm going to buy some new ordinary wooden pegs and I'll do a side-by-side -side comparison. Thank you lady in the carpenter, it's fantastic, we'll put a link below. Well with that surprise unboxing done it's time to move on to a boat job. I've been putting this one off for quite some time but uh, today's the day we're definitely going to hook into it. Uh, it involves getting access to our hot water system and to do that we've got to empty out the big uh, locker in the flooring of the cockpit here and then there's a lot of heavy stuff there's five scuba dive tanks there's all the lead weight for diving there's our spring stern lines and a lot of canvas and stuff like that uh, I've got to take everything out of the locker because I need to take out the sides uh, side walls of the locker to get access to the hot water system now if you cast your mind back to the great battery meltdown of October 2019 we made sure that we checked all of the reasons why the batteries melted down and one of the things that we absolutely had to test was our smart controller from solar green uh, 12 volt hot water heating system and we sent this back to uh, the guy who built them at the time in Croatia he tested it and said no nope, it's working within its parameters it does have a fail safe it has a double mechanism in here apparently uh, so it's a fail safe if one of them falls over the other one will take over so it's being tested this is now being sent to France from Croatia and then from France to Greece it's back with us so one of the things we're going to do is reinstall this today yay hot water for laundry we're also going to tighten up the nuts and bolts of the rudder stock quadrant because they're creaking a little bit, so there's a tad of movement there. So which job are you doing first, Buzz? Well, I'm going to do the difficult one first, yeah. <coughs> and that is removing the water heater. It's just a difficult, awkward job to get, get it removed, uh, and then I'll be able to work on it here. Uh, and then, of course, got to put it back in. <laughs> If you've been watching us for a long time you might be able to cast your mind back to the episode that I'm showing on screen right now. We were in Samos at the time when we were first installing this solar green 12 volt water heating system 
and you might recall that I had a heck of a time trying to find the right size box spanner to take the heating element out. Well, no more, because when our friends Shelley and Ian came out to visit us from Australia, we had them get a custom-built 55mm box spanner with a big pry bar. This is the beast, and this is the pry bar. That is not going to bend, no matter how much force I put onto that. So let's get this one out. Oh, I bet you can't wait to use that, hey? I'm so excited about <laughs> using this. Ian, come and share the fun. <laughs> Look at that perfect fit. Oh, yes. Okay, it's going to have the same issue as last time. Yeah, so I need to hold it. You do. Okay. How much easier is it this time? <laughs> I think it took three days in total last time. Yeah, and a bent crowbar. <laughs> Wonderful. Try and get all this liquid gasket yeah. out. So um That's quite good nick, isn't it? Yeah, we'll give it a bit of a bit of a rub with yeah. uh, some vinegar. It's not too bad though, is it? No, it's pretty good. So we'll give that a rub with vinegar. Mm. Of course the thing is we need to dig in there mm. to get the, uh, the, the the temperature sensor out mm. of there mm -hmm. so that's going to be a bit of a challenge and anyway, that's going to be the first stage accessing the temperature sensor because if we can't attach that then we're cactus but let's do that well it's a little more than an hour later and we're still working on the hot water tank here we extracted the 12 volt water heater and one of the things we noticed was where the uh, negative and positive electricity comes into the element, the little ceramic isolators were uh, showing fracture cracks and, in, and breaking away in parts. So we consider that a little bit of a risk to carry on using uh, from an electrical standpoint. Uh, we'll get that unit back to Christopher at Green Yachting and get his opinion on it and maybe get a replacement for it sent to Turkey. Uh, we won't be able to get one here sent to Greece in time before we leave. So reluctantly we've gone back to our 220 volt element which is now back in the hot water tank and all that remains for me to do now is to get the tank back into position and reconnect the hoses. And then finally I can start tightening up the nuts and bolts of the rudder stock quadrant. So what we're actually looking at here is this big stainless steel oblong uh, rudder stock quadrant and it's held in place by two nuts and bolts at the back and two nuts and bolts forward and when we're sailing sometimes they can work themselves just a little bit loose and you get a creaking and a, and a groaning there's nothing to be concerned about it's just annoying so every time we're in this locker we just come in and just give them a good, good tighten up and that stops it for another 12 months or so Uh, that was fairly loose that one yeah okay you know considering i'm now standing on the closed lid of the locker that i've been working in all day um, it's an empty locker everything else is still scattered around the, the cockpit area here and it's not going back in today because we'd only have to take it back out tomorrow a little bit later on once the uh, hardware store opens i'm going into town to buy half a dozen of these hose clamps and replace the ones that are currently on the hot water hoses um, because um, there are little drip leaks and these are when they tighten them up they're just getting to a point and going click 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 so I think new ones are in order and I'll replace those tomorrow morning 
and then we can put everything else back into this locker. Uh, and for me that's it today, it's just 3.30 in the afternoon now, it's been very hot, very sweaty, very bloody. Uh, knees. Oh. Oh, ow. Yeah. Oh, Forearms, fingers, hands. hands, everything. So it's been very hot and bloody and sweaty, uh, so I've had enough now. So tools away, shower time, and then a nice cold beer. It's a Saturday morning and a lot of people are being quite industrious in the boatyard and I'm about to get industrious too. I'm about to put the first coat of epoxy primer on to the keel. I've never worked with this stuff before, never done this before and apparently I've read online that to clean up afterwards the brushes or the mixing um, bowl or cup uh, you use uh, lacquer thinner. Well I've just been to the local hardware store and he's closed. So we have got lacquer thinner, so I've gone down the disposable route. I've got six of these little aluminium baking trays, so once I've finished they can just be thrown away. For stirring sticks I've just got these little wooden spoons. And how we're going to mix the ratio of seven to three, we're going to use these standard kitchen scales to weigh the seven to three ratio. We've got just a little over 210 grams of the first bit, and so now we need to put in 90 grams of this bit. Now we need to go stir stir where we're. Probably mix both of these two together. Okay, I reckon that is good to go. Well, that whole can was used up just doing this first coat. So we're going to have to add another can of epoxy primer two part to the shopping list from the Chandlery in Athens. But uh, I'm quite pleased with how it turned out. Obviously with this primer on we can see the large indentations where we've ground away a lot of the old stuff. So then we will actually uh, use epoxy filler to flatten out the surfaces and make it a smooth surface before the anti foul paint goes on. But yeah, that's the job for today. As you can see, Barry's been really busy working on the boat so that we can hopefully splash back in the water on the 1st of July. And it hasn't gone unnoticed. And thank you to Stephen Brunning, who's very kindly sent us a donation so that we can buy a nice bottle of wine as a reward for all the hard work that Barry's done. <laughs> We'd also like to say a really big thank you to Luke Jones and Jim Finesse who've both recently increased their pledges to us on Patreon. Thanks so much guys. Jim, you're now enjoying a poolside party and Luke, you're now dining at the captain's table. If you'd like to know more about Patreon, click the link and you may just find that there's a tier there that's just right for you. In the meantime, thank you so much for watching this video and if you've enjoyed it, do give us a thumbs up and subscribe if you haven't already and ding that bell icon and then you'll get notified of future video updates. We'd like to say a big thank you to all of you who join us every single week and until we see you next week on Sailing ABC, stay safe and healthy.